it's silly to have to start poking yourself all over your body, you know, <laughs> unless that's what you're into, you know what I mean? created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Television, rxmuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, your 30 minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. Bodybuilding, non bodybuilding, whatever is on your mind, we got you covered. Let's go to the questions. The first two questions on the show from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. Before we go to the Dave Palumbo Experience app, Dave, you and I were speaking off air and you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, TA1, thymosin alpha 1 peptide uh, from Titan Medical. Yeah, Titan Medical, uh, which you know is uh, one of my go-to clinics to get all my glutathione, all my triimmune uh, hormone replacement, everything. They do everything over there, and uh, they always have the most cutting-edge stuff. And they just got back in. It was it was out of stock for a while. It was a thymus and alpha one. Now, what that is, it's it's a peptide derived from the um, the thymus gland, which involves obviously the production of T lymphocytes, which is immunity cells. And they found that this peptide actually will enhance your immunity. So like if you have like COVID or you have like any kind of immunocompromised disease and you take that, it's going to increase your, your body's ability to fight infection. Matter of fact, they're actually using this peptide now in a lot of uh, clinical trials for cancer patients and they're getting some really good results with it. Um, I know a few people who used it, like I said, when they had like a long COVID situation where the COVID was lingering, 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 and it really kind of cured it in about five days. So you might want to check it out. Uh, I know they're doing a special. If you contact titanmedicalcenter.com, you tell them Dave Palumbo, RX Muscle sent you, they're going to give you a really nice discount and they can tell you all the uh, the therapies that are available. And once again, this is uh, just back in stock. So they hadn't had it for a while. Uh, it's probably, if you have issues with getting sick a lot, this is something you're definitely going to want to try. So again, let's uh, start from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. Uh, question about your mass cycle. I was just curious what your logic on running trend in the middle of the cycle um, and DECA at the end. Would you get less results if you run DECA in the middle and trend at the end? You know, it, it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. You know, I, I obviously, the Day Plum Experience app is a is an app you can download to your uh, from iTunes if you're a, an Apple person or Android store if you're an Android person. And it's $29 a month. You basically get me as your coach in your back pocket. So it's all my writings, all my videos I've ever done. We put up a video every week, a Q&A video where I answer people's questions, answers, kind of like another Ask Dave, only for the app members. I answer everyone's questions in an open forum. So everyone sees everyone's questions, everyone's answers. We put up a workout every week. It's a great reference. And uh, he's referencing um, my off-season cycle that I have up there. And, you know, usually you, know, you guys kind of know how I work. If you don't, I usually like to do mini cycles, like six to eight week mini cycles. And I'll usually do two with three or four in a row. So I'll do testosterone with like DACA, testosterone, with poise, testosterone with like a trend and anthate, and we'll alternate. And he's asking about the ordering of it. You know, I just, and, and the ordering is really not important. You know, I usually just by convention start with testosterone and equipoise because that's my favorite because equipoise really increases your appetite. Then I go to usually testosterone and trembolone because trembolone is a little stronger. But sometimes people have a little more trouble eating on that. But that you know, you should have your appetite up from the EQ. And then I go to DECA usually at the end of the cycle because that's usually when people's joints start hurting because they've been training so heavy and they put on a lot of weight. That's just my arbitrary way I organize it. But if you know, if you want to put the DECA 
in the beginning and you want to put the tremble on at the end or the tremble in the beginning, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's irrelevant. It's the idea is to, to switch up the anabolics every six to eight weeks so that your androgen receptors don't get used to the same compound. Testosterone, you don't have to worry about because your body naturally produces testosterone. So that's something your body is used to seeing. But the other androgens kind of hit the receptor at a different angle. It's like each, each, each uh, steroid fits in the key, the key lock, but they, it fits in slightly differently. So if you constantly change it up, it, you can sometimes keep your gains moving ahead uh, rather than stagnation. Uh, so it doesn't really matter which ones you do first, second, or third. That's just arbitrarily how I organize it. Second question, again, these questions from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. Uh, is it safe for females to use topical finasteride on their scalp to avoid hair loss? Yeah, I, you know, finasteride is not something that you, that you have to worry about as, as a woman because it, it just blocks the, the hormone or the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Uh, I haven't used any topical uh, finasterides at all. I don't, I don't even know how they work, to be honest with you. I mean, or how well they work. I mean, I know conceptually how they work. But, um, you know, I know women that take a little bit of my testolized product to, to kind of taper down hardcore anabolic cycles. You probably need finasteride to block some of that DHT, which is going to cause your side effects like hair growth on your face, deepening of the voice, you know, hair thinning on the head. Um, but if you're just like, a, if you just... Um, Notice you're breaking out a little bit or maybe your hair's thinning a little bit. The testolize at three pills twice a day is enough, I think. I think finasteride might be a little overkill um, for women. Because if you, if you eliminate too much DHT, you can, you can potentially mess with your sex drive a little bit. For men, we can handle a little – we produce a lot more DHT than women do. So you might want to be careful of that, like I said. Unless you're one of these women that does insane drug cycles, you know, then you can get away with it. But, um, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. You know, I just want to thank a lot of people, too, because I've noticed over the last couple of months, our, our members on the Day Palomo Experience app have gone like really, really high. We have a lot of great people asking a lot of good questions. Like I do these Q&As every week for the app. And I'm like, wow, these questions are, are, are better than the Ask Dave questions we do here on YouTube. So we're getting a lot of great questions. And that means that people are learning a lot of stuff because I'm answering questions that I don't even I didn't even know people wanted answers to, which makes people start thinking and it helps them think in the right direction. So not only is the app good for just common knowledge for yourself, but it's good if you're a coach and you want to keep sharp on all the topics of the day. So thanks for supporting that. Let's go to our questions from our Facebook page and our Instagram page. If you're not already following us on Facebook, just type in RX Muscle at the top on Instagram, official underscore RX Muscle. First question from uh, Tom Filiposki. Do you think that American food labels should remove fiber in its total carb count as it doesn't even get absorbed like net carbs do? Uh, in Australia, we have fiber separately from carbs, and it makes life easier. Um, so thanks from your favorite wrestler, Tommy Philippe. See you soon in the USA. Yeah, I, yeah, Tommy is, is great. He always he sends me shirts all the time and everything like that. Um, I, I, you know, they they separate. I like the way they do the food labels here in the United States now. I mean, they give total carbs, then they give you fibrous carbs so and you know if, if the total carbs are 20 grams and the fibrous carbs are 10 grams and you know that you only have 10 net carbs and then they actually give you sugar too they actually give you simple sugars which which would be part of the total carbs but at least you know how many grams of the total carbs are actually sugar so let's say five grams of sugar so you know 10 grams would be fiber get rid of that we got 10 net carbs left which are the 10 carbs you could actually absorb and of those 10 carbs five of those would be sugar and five would be like a complex starchy carb I think that gives you a lot of information. I, I, I'm pretty happy. I'm, I'm not happy about much what they do on food labels these days, but I am kind of happy with the way they list carbohydrates. Uh, question from we, we do get a lot of questions about um, bodybuilders that are over the age of 50. This was from Andrew Puzo. For a person over the age of 50 that's not on TRT, is it better to work each body part twice a week or once a week? So, I mean, again, we, we generally talk about like maintenance goals for people around yeah. that age. Uh, once a week or twice a week, not on TRT. Look, I think that training each body part once a week is good, whether you're natural on TRT or on a ma ma massive steroid cycle. I don't think that it warrants training more frequently because you're on drugs. Drugs just make everything work better. It doesn't mean you could overtrain and get away with it. And I think that's a big mistake people make. People think, all right, I'm on gear now. I'm going to train even more because I'm going to, I'm going to, now I'm going to sneak in extra workouts and I'm going to grow more. You don't grow when you're breaking down muscle. You grow when you're resting. 
all that the steroids enable you to do is train heavier, which you'll get stronger, train more intensely because you're going to have more aggression, okay? And then let your body recover the same as you normally would, and you're going to recover faster. So I think a huge mistake people make is training more frequently or they try to train twice a day, and then they wind up overtraining themselves and they don't make the gains that they that they think they're going to make. And I saw this firsthand when I first started taking anabolics, and I thought the same thing because I had friends that would run around the gym like lunatics training each body part twice a week. And you know what? I wasn't making any improvements. And I, and I, then Dorian came out with Mike Menser's uh, routine and I realized I was doing too much volume. I wasn't resting enough. And as soon as I modified that, I started making massive gains. And so you can't overtrain. I, I think training, if you, if you want to train a body part more than once a week, then you're not training it hard enough when you're actually in the gym doing that body part, because I could never see myself training legs twice a week. Okay, with the amount of intensity I put into a leg training session or training my back twice a week, I just mentally didn't want to do it. I, I gave so much to that workout that I was like so happy that I didn't have to train it through the following week. And that's what you should feel the same way. If you're not, then you're not training hard enough. This question uh, is from Bren Brennan Cheney is about your body part training split uh, Monday through Sunday back when you were competing. I did, uh, and I've talked about this before. I, I used to do a, um, a five-day split. So I would train each body part in five days during the week, and I'd take two days off. So I would usually do two days on or three days on, one day off, two days on, one day off. And I would, I would mix it up like that. And what I did do it toward the end of my career where I was trying to like really prioritize my arms, I was doing an eight-day split. So I was training six of those days and taking two days off. But one of those days was just triceps. And one of those days was just biceps and forearms. So that was a really short day. But I figured I wanted to prioritize my arms. And, and, it, and that worked fine because I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't doing a tremendous amount of volume. You know, those body parts didn't take a tremendous amount out of me. I was still only training, you know, you know, back and shoulders and chest once a week. So uh, that was fine. Um some people might have a problem going every eight days. I, I didn't because I had a lot of muscle at that point. I just really wanted to prioritize my arms because my arms were a little behind and then they came up when I did that. So, but I think a five day, you know, five days of training, two days off every, you know, every seven days is probably the right way to go. There's another question um, from a gentleman saying that he, let me just see if I can find a real quick. Oh, so tight hips, lower back from driving for a living. This could be from Jimmy the Bull, but yeah. the <laughs> given he, uh, what can I do to loosen up a bit by using training? What exercises should I avoid for tight low back and hips? And what exercises will be helpful? This beyond just, you know, standard stretching. My suggestion would be to stretch every night. I mean, I know it, no one wants to do it, but when you're sitting in front of the uh, you know TV at night, you know, lay on the floor, sit on a, you know, get a rug or put a blanket down and, and, and stretch out. While you're watching TV, there's always a point in the day where you're wasting time. And if you just do that once a day and get in the habit of stretching for 15 minutes every night, you're going to be much better. Because those hip flexors from sitting in that position get tight. Obviously, getting a deep tissue massage uh, is going to help as well. A little ART if it gets really bad. But if you just stretch every night, you're going to feel a million times better. Let's go to Amir MDI. Please give us some examples of PCT protocols and differences between HCG and HMG usage? You know, I don't use HMG for standard PCT protocol because HCG mimics the hormone luteinizing hormone, which directly stimulates the testicles to produce testosterone. Um, HMG stimulates or simulates the hormone FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, that causes the testicles to produce sperm. Now, you could indirectly influence sperm production by just by producing testosterone locally in the testicles. When we do PCT, the goal is not to raise sperm count, it's to raise testosterone endogenously. In other words, in the testicles. Uh, so your body naturally starts producing it. So you don't really need to use HMG. And HMG is much more expensive than HCG. So we use HCG. Usually we do two weeks of that, 2,000 IUs every third day, five shots. And then we'll go to do some sort of an estrogen receptor blocker. Whether we use Clomid or we use Nolvidex, it doesn't matter. It's 50 milligrams a day of Clomid or 20 milligrams or 10 milligrams of actually tamoxifen twice a day. Um, 
if you want to use that and do that for two weeks. And that will turn the pituitary on. So we first stimulate the testicles, then we turn the pituitary on, and, and then we're usually good to go. If, however, I get someone who contacts me and says, hey, Dave, I'm looking to, you know, to get my wife pregnant. I want to increase my fertility as well as, you know, I'm coming off a cycle. Then we use the HMG as well because the HMG will cause directly stimulate the testicles to start producing more sperm. Uh, we'll also use, you know, usually injectable glutathione, which will raise, you know, the ability of the sperm to swim. So it increases their motility. And then I always use like a really good quality multivitamin, multimineral, like my V-mineralized to make sure that the sperm's morphology or how they're formated or how they're formed is ideal. Because if there's not enough minerals and vitamins around, a lot of times the sperm can swim and they, they, they're they there. They just, they don't have the right you know, shape and then they can't fertilize the egg. So you want to address all that. I give this, I've been giving out my baby making protocol for free to anyone who emails me for, for years now. And you know what? I can't tell you how many people come up to me. Uh, someone came up to me at the Olympia, actually. I think I told the story. And they actually said this. They showed me the baby they just had. And they had been trying for years. And they did the De Palumbo protocol. And uh, it worked in, I think, a couple months. So uh, if anyone has an issue, let me know. But as far as PCT goes, no reason to use HMG. Let's go back to uh, – I was looking for this question from Mike Molinaro. Are there any negative effects of stacking HEH and T3 together? No, other than the fact that, you know, you might increase your metabolism too fast. You know, you got to remember, when you take GH, okay, growth hormone, one of the – I guess I don't know if it would be considered a side effect, but one of the effects of GH is that it actually causes your inactive thyroid hormone, known as T4 – or thyroxine, to convert to T3 at higher rates. So if you look at someone who's been on GH for a while and you look at their thyroid function tests, usually what you see is normal TSH, okay, low T4, which people think is bad, but it's really not because that's inactive thyroid. And then you see higher T3, you know, much higher T3. So you're, because you're converting more T4 to T3, which of course is going to tell the pituitary don't release more uh, TSH, so TSH will never be high in that situation. It might even be a little low, but your T3 will be higher, which is obviously good because it means that you're going to be burning fat optimally. Uh, if you throw T3 on top of that while you're trying to grow, you might have trouble. But obviously, while you're dieting for a competition, we use T3 all the time with clenbuterol and NGH. So obviously, you want to optimize as much fat burning as possible. So, But I always tell people, be very careful of doing that in the off season, I would not recommend using any thyroid hormone or clenbuterol for that matter, because of the fact that you're already going to have high T3 levels and it's going to make it very hard to eat enough food. Let's go to Alan and Minch. Is it safe to inject two, um, two ML into the shoulder, one ML test, one ML EQ, trying to avoid separate injections? Yeah, that's fine. I, I always tell people if you're going to, if you're taking your anabolic steroid shots, put them in one syringe. It's silly to, have to start poking yourself all over your body, you know, <laughs> unless that's what you're into. You know what I mean? I think it's much easier just to put them into one shot. And, uh, you know, obviously you don't want to put more than three ML into one area because then you have a, a bit bigger chance of maybe not absorbing it, maybe getting like a sterile abscess because the oil gets trapped. So you don't want to put too much in one area. So three MLs is about the, the max. Let's go to Hinkle JD. Generally speaking, at what age is it damn near impossible to add quality muscle? I'm not talking about maintaining. I mean increasing size. It's a loaded question because if you're training since you're a teenager, you know, you, you're going to hit a point faster or younger, I should say, that you can't really put on a lot more size. Then if you – I know guys that started lifting when they were in their 40s. and then they, they were building muscle well into their 50s because they started late, you know, so – they didn't hit their, they didn't hit that, that, that plateau until later in life, you know? So I, you can't really say, well, there is a specific amount of, or a certain age that you just don't grow anymore. It doesn't, it, it's not relevant. Ronnie Coleman started relatively late taking anabolics. So he, he grew, you know, until, until he was 40 essentially, you know? And so most people never, you know, continue growing that late into their careers. Uh, Kai Green also started, you know, taking anabolics late in life. So he, 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 I think had a much longer, window or a later window of when he started adding his peak size. And that's, that's, that's expected. 
uh, how much someone's going to put on and how long of a period they have to do it is very genetically, uh, individually determined. There's no one rule fits all. And if I said there was, I'd be lying. So. We're going to take a couple of um, judging related questions. One is from Bilal Hamide. Does including a vacuum in your poses for the open class get you extra points now i don't know if he means necessarily points is what's on paper but maybe points uh subjectively or is it unnecessary if a vacuum pose looks good on your physique then you do it you know arnold had a great vacuum it wasn't because he thought you had to do a vacuum. it looked it, it looked good in a vacuum so i know guys that try to do vacuums in it and it's not really they don't have a big rib box it just doesn't look that good so if it doesn't look good, don't do it. You know, if it looks good, then, then do it. I mean, in, in open bodybuilding, it really doesn't matter. You want to do what looks best. I know guys that have really nice abs, and they look better when they blow down on their abs. You know, Flex Wheeler didn't ever hit a vacuum pose. He always blew down on those abs. So you got to kind of have to work with what you got, so to speak, and, and do what looks best. And that's why you have coaches, you have, you know, people that you, you trust around you, and you can say, you know, what looks good. Is a, is a vacuum double bicep better than a, than a blow down on the abs double bicep or just, you know, stay regular double bicep? And, and then, then you make the judgment call. Some guys have a really good vacuum. And if I had a really good vacuum and that was like something that, that was going to help me look better, then, I, then absolutely execute it. If not, then don't do it. You don't have to do it because everyone else does it. If it's, if it's not your strong pose – don't show weakness, you know, don't do something. And people say, well, that, that vacuum sucks. I don't even know why he's doing it. I wouldn't do it. It's like, uh, you know, in the free mandatory poses, why would you hit a pose? That's not, your, if you don't have a good ab thigh pose, then don't do ab thighs, you know, in, in, in the man, in, in the, um, in the compulsory round where you can hit whatever poses you want. If you're a, a big freaky guy and your most muscular shots are the best shots, hit 10 most muscular shots. If you have to, because that's, that's your bread and butter. You know, so I think that a lot of people feel like obligated to, to do certain poses and, and you're really not if it's not something that's going to help your score or wow the judges. Like I said, we are going to take uh, two judging related questions. The second one is from uh, Live for Pump. How do you think the judges view vascularity? Does a competitor do better because they're more vascular? Obviously, it seems to be more common in the open now, but it wasn't really, uh, in his opinion, until Gaspari came along. Yeah. If shows were determined on vascularity, I'd be Mr. Olympia. So, um, I think they like it. I think everyone likes it. I think people think it's kind of freaky. You know, look, and I know the competitors love it. Everyone wants to be vascular, especially at a show. And it's certainly not going to hurt you. I, I think it can only help. But, you know, just I've seen guys that were just all veiny on stage, but they had no separation in any of the muscle groups. Like, they really weren't in shape. They just were veiny, you know, vascular guys. So – it's got to be a balance. You know, you got to be able to show the lines in your, in, in your legs and your, in your, uh, in your, you know, pecs and stuff like that. It's not just all about veins. And I think that that is something that people mistake. I all, I've also seen people that have beautiful lines and they're in terrific condition and they have like one vein down their bicep and that's it. That's genetically how their body is built. It doesn't matter, but they're in, they were in great shape and that's all that matters. So, you know, veins add a little bit of freak factor to the to, to the posing, and, and like I said, the fans love it, and I'm sure some of the judges like it as well. But it's not going to change your score by any means. You know, if you're not in shape as well. The grind box wants to know if you've seen the studies that glutathione might also protect against cancer cells. I, I personally think glutathione can do a lot of stuff that we don't even know about yet, that we're not even aware of. So. I'm a huge believer. I, you know that I take it every day. I take 200 milligrams every day, intramuscular with an insulin, like a 27 gauge insulin pin. And you know what? I, I think it really helps immunity. I help. I think it helps with detoxification. I think it helps with uh, keeping inflammation down. And I wouldn't be surprised if we find a host of other things like mental acuity. And that's the body's main antioxidant cleansing system that it uses naturally. And I have to imagine when you work out, you exhaust that system way faster than the average person who doesn't do anything on a daily basis. So for people who work out, just like we need more vitamins and we need more minerals, we probably need more glutathione too. The problem is that we, you can't take a, a pill, a glutathione pill. Now you can take N-acetylcysteine, which is a precursor 
but who knows how much your body is going to really convert of N-acetylcysteine to glutathione. It's better off just taking the glutathione. The problem is you got to take it by injection. So I usually, like I said, do intramuscular injections of it. When I was actually at my friend's uh, spa the other day up in uh, Connecticut, he did like an IV of all these vitamins on me. And then at the end, they pushed right through the IV, 300 milligrams of, of glutathione right into the vein, which I'm sure is the most direct way to do it. I don't recommend doing that because whenever you start doing stuff intravenously, even if you're just putting an injection in there, you risk infection. And we don't need to see anyone getting any kind of septicemia. So intramuscular, it's going to get in just as easily. Uh, it might burn a little bit more, but I think you're safer doing it that way. But yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I can't say enough about it. Let's go to Swole Ginger. What is the cause of massive lower back pumps? Could it be from me taking an oral for the or the massive amounts of food I've been eating or a combination of both? If so, what is the solution, again, for massive lower back pumps? Yeah, I, I think it's probably the orals. Orals make you hold a lot of water, and I, I used to notice that too. Um, food, it's not the food because I, I look, I've eaten enormous amounts of food, and I and you would think that, you know, I would always get a huge, crazy back pump if that's what caused it. I, I think it's the orals make you hold a lot of fluid. I've noticed that. Diana Ball especially used to make me hold a lot of fluid. And I would feel it in my face too. Like my face would be like stretched like, like out because it was so – there was a layer of water under every, every bit of tissue in my body. Even my legs, you can push on my legs. I would see like a little pitting edema and stuff like that. So that's not uncommon. And if you're weighing you know, at your max, so let's say you know I was up to over 300 pounds – and then I add another five pounds of just water weight to my body, especially around that lower back, and it kind of pushes on the kidneys. It's just uncomfortable. And um, that was another reason why I never really used orals. I didn't use orals mostly because I didn't really um, – I wasn't able to eat on them. They kind of killed my appetite a little bit. But I hated that, like, overly bloated feeling, you know, from them. And they do that because they're, you know, they're, they, they, they're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. So you get, like, a massive surge of the hormone, and then it starts dying down but the water doesn't go away. And then, you know, you, you'll be up all night all peeing your brains out in the morning, you'll feel better. And then after two meals during the day, you're, you're bloated again. So, you know, if it, if it's bothering you that much and you're getting these massive pumps, uh, I would, I would cut out the orals and see if that helps. Sometimes GH can cause that too. If you take too much of it. Let's go to Nico Cantemir. If the hematocrit is too high, 58 to 60 is a good, is a good idea to take one, um, Adiro goes example acetyl salicylco, a baby aspirin every day. You know, just because you have a lot of blood in your bloodstream, more so than normal, doesn't mean you're going to clot. Because red blood cells don't just clot for no reason. Okay, <laughs> just because you have more of them doesn't mean they're going to stick together. They're not like there's not like glue in there. The stuff that makes them clot would be your platelets, the platelet components. So if your platelets are normal. And most bodybuilders have low platelets. And I don't know if that's because we have higher red blood cells in our bodies know to compensate. But I just noticed when I look at blood work, usually people's platelets are low, bodybuilders. Mine, mine are always like a little, not like, I'm not talking pathologically low. I'm talking like a little on the, just below the normal range. And like I said, that's not a bad thing because no one wants a clot. And, you know, I, I interviewed a, a doctor on this show and he made a very good point. He said, you know, people who live at altitude, you know, like people in, in Denver, Colorado, they're a mile up. The oxygen content of that, of the air that they breathe is much lower. So what happens is their bodies produce more red blood cells to compensate for the low oxygen so that their bodies can extract enough oxygen to provide the brain with enough, you know, uh, oxygen. And no one's, no one's telling these people at altitude to go donate blood, even though they're all walking around with high red blood cells. And if the higher your red blood cells, the higher your hematocrit. Hematocrit is just, a ma uh, is just a measure of how many red blood cells are in your bloodstream. So it's not dangerous in and of itself as long as your clotting factors, your platelets, are normal. So um, can a baby aspirin hurt? No, but I don't think it's necessary. If you're taking like omegalyze or any kind of essential fatty acid supplement or any kind of vitamin E, that really makes your blood very hard to clot. So I, I, I don't see clotting being an issue. Now, obviously, in, in the day and age we live in with, you know, with certain, you know, jabs that you take, it can increase clotting. But that, that's another story. It has nothing to do with, you know, red blood cell count. Let's go to uh, uh, da, 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 Vita per Templar. I recently switched to a 400 mg sip NF8 and my 1 ml shot are swelling my shoulders a bit. Any recommendations? 
One more time. Yeah, so he recently switched to a 400 MG uh, sip and anthate, and his 1 ml shots are making his shoulders swell up a bit. Oh. It sounds to me like, you know, you're probably not using sipinate. You're probably using propanate. Test propanate usually causes that inflammatory response locally wherever you inject it. A lot of times people think they're taking sip or they think they're taking an anthate, and they're actually this, the gear they got is really test propanate. Only way to really tell would be to buy, you know, the Roy test kits I sell at DavePalumbo.com. You should test everything you put in your body. I don't, I don't know why everyone doesn't. A lot of people do. Look, we sell a lot of these kits. So, I mean, I, I, I know there's a lot of people testing their gear, but there are a lot of people, you know, my, some of my clients included, and I tell them, who, I'm like, you know, you don't really look like you're really, you know, on that much stuff. Have you tested your gear? Well, not really. I, I was supposed to, and I never bought the kits. Test your gear. It's $20 a tester. Come on. You test it once, and you know it's good, then you don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't know why people don't do it. I mean, I don't care who gives it to you. I don't care if he's the most honest person in the world. A lot of people just don't know. Okay, so you're better off testing your gear. You know it's good, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. So, you know, when I hear people tell me that, oh, this testosterone shot hurts every time I inject it, I feel like someone hit me with a hammer. I'm like, that sounds like test propionate to me. That's not, sipionate and anthate don't hurt. They don't leave like pain after injection site, at the injection site. So um, I would test your gear if I were you. Take one more question from uh, Laura Krafek or Krafik. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, the safest compounds and doses for muscle growth for women. Yeah, you know, the only real safe anabolic steroid that there is that's going to basically give you zero side effects would be Anivar. So you can take anywhere from 10, even up to 30 milligrams a day, and you're not going to probably get any side effects from it. It's just not androgenic enough. It doesn't seem to change women's voices, you know, unless it's fake, of course. So you get, once again, test your stuff if you're not getting it from a clinic. Um, so that seems to be the safest thing. Obviously, growth hormone, which is not an anabolic steroid, it's a protein hormone, is also safe just because it's not, it's not a it's not a male hormone. It's, it's a protein hormone. So you can use that to build muscle as a woman. So, you know, 20, 30 milligrams of Ativar a day, you know, a, a unit and a half of GH a day, very safe cycle. Um, you know, using clenbuterol and some T3 when you're dieting for a competition, very safe because they don't have androgenic side effects to them. And, uh, you know, if you want to push the envelope a little, I think women can get away with a little, uh, Winstrel, 10 milligrams, 15 milligrams a day orally. The orals are better for women because they're not in your system 24 hours a day. They kind of peak and then they kind of, de as they're declining, the levels go down. So you're not really being exposed to the maximum dose all day long, which is good because you get less side effects from that as opposed to taking like a long acting injectable. Like people ask me, what about Primabone? Because Primabone is pretty much on par with Winstrel. Does that cause any problems? I said, well, in some women it does because Primabolin is Primabolin and Nanthate. So it's a long acting Primabolin ester. So it's in your system all the time at high levels. So some women will, will notice more side effects from Primabolin than they do from Winstrel. Now, if you can get Primabolin acetate tabs, those are the safest things you can possibly take because they're in and out in about three, four hours. So you almost have to take them twice a day. And women can take 25 milligrams of those twice a day. I haven't seen those in years. You know, I don't, they're, they're very, probably the, almost virtually impossible to find. And they're probably very expensive. But, you know, if they are around, then that's something that you can consider using as well. Anything other than that, anabolic steroids, speaking wise for women, is, is now you're rolling the dice. Because DECA, EQ, Masteron, these are all drugs that will cause side effects. How much of a side effect? It's usually number, it's twofold. It's number one, it's cumulative. So the longer you take it, the more likely you are to get side effects. So you might take it for six weeks and you might get nothing. The seventh week, you might get your side effects, you know. Uh, and some women just react poorly to them. Like some women, they take one shot of Decker and their voice goes deep. Another one could take Decker for 10 years and they don't have, and their voice doesn't go deep. So it's, you know, do you want to roll the dice? If I was a woman, I would not want to, but that's just me. You know, uh, also some drugs will make their hair thin, thinner, uh, and that's something that a lot of women don't want either. Some of them will get facial hair growth from certain drugs. So to be safe, Anivar is the safest. If you if you probably did a little windshield with that, you'd probably be okay. I personally would not recommend if you're a woman doing more than that. If you're, if you're interested in no side effects. If you don't care, then that's a different story. 
But I think that women can build plenty of muscle on those two drugs. That's going to do for this episode of Ask Dave. Right now on the channel, we have a lot, a lot of new videos right now. Uh, we just put this up earlier today. Um, is it Engenla or Engenla? And uh, it's it's pronounced Engenla. So N -Genla, like the, right. the, the letter N, Genla, which is, which is really an amazing compound when you think about it. They somehow figured out how to make growth hormone last a week in your body. So one shot lasts a week by combining it with the HCG molecule of all things. It's a, it's a, it's a really pretty novel uh, thing. So if you watch the, uh, the video I did on it, you'll get all the information on it. So Dave did a full uh, explainer video on Engenla. That dropped today. That available right now on the channel. And then, of course, all new episodes of the new Leap Priest and Jimmy the Bull show, uh, The Confessional, that dropped Monday night yesterday. <laughs> it Saturday. actually got monetized, I noticed, which is a miracle in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you know, we've been getting a lot of uh, a lot of feedback <clears throat> regarding that episode, regarding Lee, obviously. Um, but it's all good. Things. You know what the good. funny? You know what the funny thing, Sid, is people. <laughs> I probably shouldn't even say. Lee and, and all all of us on, uh, on who work for Arx Muscle, who, who yeah. do all the regular shows, we break each other's balls so severely, but none of us take anything personal. In other words, you might think so and so doesn't like this guy and this yeah. person's bad. This person, no, it, it's all it's it's all shtick, as we say. It's all like an act, and you the audience eats it up like crazy. They all think that we're always yelling at each other, mad at each other, but. That's just not the case, Dave. I'm going to cut you off here because you're you're lifting the curtain a little way too much right now. No, but but but, it, but, it, this, but this is like funny. this is like WWE saying, "Hey, yeah. listen." <laughs> no, we don't really. Funnier. I think it's funnier because people get all riled up over it. It's, I know. Great. it's the funniest thing. Then you start to get all these like alliances forming, yeah. these coalition yeah. groups no, forming. No. It's the funniest thing. But all is good. All is good. So yeah, that episode of the confessional and yesterday's after hours and uh, Sunday night's episode of the Heavy Muscle Radio Show with Dave Palumbo and Chris Aceto. And then, of course, the following day, no sooner than like nine hours after yeah. Dave Palumbo asked Chris Aceto, oh, how's Andrew Jack looking? And Chris like, well, you know, you know, he's, he's good, he's good. But eight, nine hours later, we get the news that uh, Andrew <laughs> Jack uh, will not be competing at right. the Arnold Classic or the Arnold UK. So certainly a blow for both lineups. But again, Dave's reaction to that. Uh, and then, of course, tomorrow, all new episode of the Dave Palumbo podcast. I guess we used to call it Iron Rage, but the word, the phrase Iron Rage, for whatever reason. It rages YouTube for some reason. It yeah. was tickling the uh, YouTube <laughs> algorithm the wrong way. And of course, we don't want to do that right now. Yeah. So uh, the Dave Palumbo podcast. Uh, we actually did get somebody asking. Um, uh, Philip Dussel, a uh, good friend of the show, oh. DM me. Uh, Ask me specifically, I guess, when you and Romano would be doing um, rips and rants again. And I, I didn't really have an answer. So I'm like, look, you obviously have Romano on yeah. with After Hours. But then you have him on the new format, the Dave Palumbo podcast. It's kind of a rotating door between Romano, Lee Priest. Sometimes you'll have And Alex. actually, you know, Jimmy the Bull will be on today. So Sometimes. Exactly, right. So I think uh, that show kind of encompasses um, rips and rants, Iron Rage, and mm -hmm. of course – um, you know, the absences of uh, Lee Pre. I'm sorry, or Jimmy the Bull. Uh, you know, Jimmy the Bull the has a fun told me a story. I'm not going to ruin it for you guys. Yeah, it's, it was so funny when I was, I almost got into an accident. I was driving, I was laughing so hard because, <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you what it's about. It was, it, it involves the doctor and Jimmy the Bull and taking a, a stool sample. And, and I think you guys are going to want to hear it, so you better tune in today. There've been a lot, well, tomorrow, of, a lot of stories involving Jimmy the Bull and doctors. Remember last year on After Hours, there was the story about the attractive nurse, yeah, yeah. and Jimmy the Bull. <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. I, I'd like to, for this show to be monetized, yeah. but anyway. Yeah. So a whole slate right now on the channel, and of course, uh, upcoming episode of the Dave Palumbo Pat podcast, and of course, Dave's um, reaction for Angela. Uh, that live on the channel right now. And I don't know if Dave's going to get a chance to record this. If he does, we'll be sure to have it up on the channel probably later tonight. And that is uh, Larry Wheels seemingly transitioning back into the strength game. He did have a period of competing in the classic physique division. Now, not sure if he's departing from that, but he did drop a clip of himself uh, shoulder pressing 
400 pounds yesterday. So uh, <laughs> it's crazy. He's back. <laughs> so yeah. Dave uh, is going to have a reaction to that. We'll have some fun with that. We always do whenever it comes to Larry Wheeler showing his uh, feats of strength. But yep. if you haven't already done so, subscribe below. Hit the notification bell. If you like what you're watching, hit the like button, comment below. And as always, we appreciate all of your support on this show, on all of our formats, and throughout the course of the calendar year. We're going to start our Arnold Classic preview segments over the course of the next few days um we are proud to announce that iron mag labs has stepped up like they do really throughout the course of the year for us but this time stepping up in a much bigger capacity they are going to be sponsoring our coverage of the arnold classic all of our content between now leading into the weekend and then of course everything from columbus ohio dave palumbo will be there so of course it's going to be a lot of fun you never know who we're going to bump into in columbus and just like an olympia weekend uh, when Dave's in town, you never know who we're going to bump into, what we're going to do, what kind of fun things we're going to have. But it's all going to be recorded. It's all going to be on camera. And uh, we're certainly going to share everything for you uh, from Columbus and from the Arnold Classic experience. For Dave Palumbo, I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time.